Hey guys and welcome to the generated texture tutorial for Blender. In this video we're going to go over exactly what a generated texture is and how to use it in a very flexible way in a shader. Now you may have heard the term procedural before. Procedural and generated are practically synonymous. You can use them interchangeably. Procedural generation is basically where you create a texture using an algorithm in computer graphics. So basically what that means is you can get a texture that is not only very flexible but also it's infinitely scalable. You have an infinite resolution. There's no pixels or anything. It's all algorithm based and it's much more efficient in terms of its file size and stuff like that. It doesn't take up a lot of data. So if you want to create your own procedural textures, you're going to have to learn how to do the basics. So let's go ahead and go over that real quick. It's very, very simple to create a procedural texture. We're in the materials tab now for cycles and you'll notice that we have a basic diffuse material. If you want to create a procedural texture and add that to the material, we have a little button right here next to the color bar and that will give us the texture option. So all of these textures here provided by cycles are generated except for image texture and environment texture I believe. These two are literally the definition of non-procedural. Everything else is procedural here so we have a noise texture which is pretty pretty standard and we have a Voronoi texture. Voronoi texture is also pretty standard. It's very common. Let's go ahead and use the Voronoi texture real quick and show you what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift Z to show you exactly what the pattern is. And you can see it kind of looks like an underwater material. It kind of looks like if you're underwater looking up or if you are if you have those water reflections or something like that. So that's kind of what Voronoi does. You can also change the scale up a little bit. I, I can change this to 10 and you'll notice that the cells get smaller. And the scale doesn't affect the size of the texture per se but affects the parameters that go into generating that texture. So you're never just, just going to get a scale of bigger or smaller. It's going to be a little bit more complex. You'll notice that the cells and stuff, they actually sort of evolve a little bit as I drag this. They don't just scale up or down, they actually change. So you can even animate this parameter if you wanted to create a little bit of a randomness to it. There's also a option for intensity versus cells. This is just a subsection of Voronoi. So this is a pretty cool look as well, kind of asphalty. Now, once you create this texture in the material tab, then you can go into the texture tab and you'll notice there's a few more options here. So these options go over the mapping and that will control sort of the actual scale here based on what axis, for example, you can control the scale here for the X axis. I can bring that back to one if I wanted to. Obviously the Z axis is vertical and you can also control the rotation. I can rotate the texture in a way and you can control the location of it and kind of shift it over in a very, very cool way. So this is all very helpful stuff for fine tuning your procedural texture. The bulk of it is taken care of by Blender with their procedural texture options. Now you can combine these in different ways. Let's go ahead and go to the node editor real quick. I'm going to go ahead and open that up here, just like so. I'm going to bring this to the node editor. Now the node editor here shows us that there is a Voronoi texture attached to the color of the diffuse here. Now let's say we didn't want to see the color, the pretty rainbow colors of the Voronoi cell texture. Instead of the color, you can use the factor. And that will actually simply be the values of the texture instead of the color of the texture. Value meaning grayscale. So it'll be a grayscale version of the texture. That's a very useful thing to have. And you can also use these textures for displacement, for example. Now if I zoom in here, you can tell that there is a slight amount of displacement here, which allows the texture to kind of pop out a little bit. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with these textures. It's very, very flexible. And that's it for generated textures in Blender. 